So I'll call the meeting to order, and it is, let's see, what time is it? 7.05 p.m. And uh, first thing we need to do is review and approve the minutes from our meeting back on November 15th. That did very good. Thank you. I thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone want to make a motion? Uh, I'll move to approve them. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Right. Um, and then the next uh, discussion about financial statements, and we'll sign the warrants. Hi, I'm Judy Hool. I'm from the Management Solution. I'm working with Mark Chapulis here. So, uh, Mark is at another meeting, so I'm uh, uh, pleased to be here. So, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is it H O U L E? Yes, okay, mm -hmm. good. Rhymes the school. That's what I tell people. Um, so you have in front of you uh, the report for um, through the end of November, and um, things look pretty well on track spending-wise. I don't see anything that's really literally of concern. Um, you know, this is the time of the year. You're about halfway through the year, so this is the time of year when we'll kind of do a deep dive and just take a look at how the lines are actually doing and do some projections forward to see if there's any um, adjustments that might need to be made. But right now, things are looking in pretty good shape, so. Okay. I didn't have any questions. Hi, did you get started? Just got started. Great. Total of the um, It's in the package, so. Oh, okay, and then it comes back around. Yeah, when it comes back around, I'll grab it. No questions from you? Not yet. <laughs> so we did the uh, call to orders. Okay. Hi. Uh, approved the minutes. There he is. Okay. And uh, just got a statement that where things look good and you no. Know, we're at public comment. Uh, does, do you have a, a total of the warrants there? Uh, there's. That's not a back of the envelope kind of a thing. The amount. Well, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven separate warrants. Oh, okay. So, uh, a financial total, it does not say. Yeah, yeah no problem. We'll get to it. Sorry. No, back back I can do the math. You want to do the math? Yeah, we should. I'm sorry. When I come back, I'm going to Okay. Leave it to the experts. Uh, so, now we have a public comment. No public comment. And for unfinished business, uh, we have our update on the water quality uh, issues. Yeah. Welcome, Darren. Absolutely. I'll jump right in right into that. Um, I just got to find the right email. So it is, um, we are replacing the tank over the break. Replacing? And keeping our or fingers crossed. Relining it. Relining. Sorry, okay. thank you. Relining it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, relining. Okay. And and uh, there's a whole schedule that's being thrown around between um, between Kristen and Bob Lesko and the different people involved just so that each starting once the kids leave the building, Katie's going to swing up, <coughs> and that's going to swing in, drain the tank. They're going to start to work on it through Monday. I'm saying this all right, mm -hmm. right? And um, get a drying period, and then they refill the tank, test the tank, and they had the whole kind of thing. So this. The down part about it is this building will be without water over break. Right. And so Kristen has to reach out to community members that use the building so they understand All that. All the basketball The basketball players, league, no, you bring your own tough water. Loss, mm -hmm. Tough You got to bring your own no, water. No, we were asked to not come in. All right, not come in. because well, yeah. you, you can't use the bathroom either. In the, uh, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that is the game plan there. So I'm, I mean, it's, it's sad that we have to do it, but I'm happy that we get it done. We get it done we properly, do it. and you know, there's never, you know, while the water may be um, good enough to drink, it's. I think we have to have a higher standard um, for our kids. And when there's any kind of question about water, um, I think it's best that we we are able to do it and fix it that way. So, has it still progressed, or is it still not just the same, yeah. the same as yeah. our last meeting? Yeah, okay. like still got a smell, still got yeah. a taste. Are we asking them to reimburse for bottled water or doing it, or this tank's good enough? Um, I will ask. I don't know where we, where we end on that. I um, thought that Tom Hutchinson was asking. To, uh, Tom Hutchinson told yeah. me in a meeting that he was going to be asking for the reimbursement. That's what he told me, too. Would you like me to follow up, Curious? Sure. Okay. Cool. But I will write it down anyways to make sure you follow up. 
Yeah, somebody's got to follow up. He did. Oh, I just met with him about three weeks ago, and he did tell me that, so he was ready. Right. That's got to not be a little expensive at this point. Yeah. But it's good that they agreed to do it. And... Progress. Progress. Absolutely. I know. It's perfect timing. Our fingers crossed. Perfect timing. Now, when we did it last time, it was summer. Now it's winter. Do do environmental factors pay any? Do we know? Um, as part of the thing, they asked us to keep the heat on in the building, um, okay. just so that the drying doesn't and that end of the building. Freeze. Not, well, not just freeze, <laughs> but um, just for the drying time, the curing, um, just from the temperatures, I, I imagine. Oh, okay. Because they requested, I'm going to make the guess that it cures better that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, all yeah, right. I found it. I found my notes at the end of talking about it, but okay. I have a general. I just pass that along. You guys can take a quick look at it, but it's just a, a just a general um, outline of the timeline for the tank. So okay. I didn't do it a full handout because it's one of those things where you look at it, you won't look at it again. And Kristen, do you need anything from the school committee to help make this happen? Or no, thank you so much. We're okay. we're in good shape. We're ready to. Okay. Yep. Are you taking some time off over the break? I am going to take some time off. I'm going to catch up some, too, because unfortunately I was down and out last oh. week. I was sick. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, also a good catch-up week. My boys will be home a little bit, and then yeah. they'll leave, and I'll play catch-up. So do you have somebody who'll check up on things here? or? Yes. Between Bob and I, we will be checking in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bob will cover or the town, too, right? Could cover? No. Okay. Um. I, I kind of lost that, sorry, lost the thread towards well, the Kristen end. Well, Kristen actually is going to take some time off. Somebody should keep an eye on the project. It is a town project, too, but whatever. Yeah. We'll trust Bob. Um, and yeah, town we'll administrator as well. He's right. been included in the emails of the timeline, too, yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, so. Yeah. so that's good. The Bob schedule looks good, too. It's accounting for every day and yeah. getting yeah. right on it. All the little details. The little details. Wow, they're starting the week weekend. Wow, before Christmas. Mm -hmm. oh, that's risky. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. We'll have faith. <laughs> Time is of the essence. They're doing it Christmas Eve day until it's done. Okay. So, win friends and influence okay. people right there. Just so we don't mix them up. All right. Onward. Did you do the financials? Um, we did. Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. And That's we're, what I thought. But we're I on track. Mm -hmm. was, was so, yeah. so are we on to reports? Uh, yeah, so new business. We have the uh, update Sorry. on the school okay. lunch financial. Lunch. Lunch? Yep. Oh, yes. Lunch. Let the meat lunch. <laughs> I'm passing them down. The problem is they're part of the whole packet that you guys have already received. Did you guys receive the financial packet? Oh, it was a mm -hmm. two-page email. Packet. Yeah. Oh, so I have the printout. If anybody wants a printout of the financial packet, the lunch was with it. So I'm taking the... Ira had to go out of town for family emergency is why he's not here. So here's the last one. All right. So um, for financials, the, <clears throat> the lunch program is um, not improving at the, the rate we were hoping it would be improving at. It's, it's pretty close to where it was last year. Um, and a couple of the reasons for that is that there was a... Um, certain um, expenditures in the beginning of the year, such as longevity bonus <coughs> um, to an employees, and um, some early ordering kind of threw off the numbers early in the year. Sales are not up um, compared to a light counterpart. You know, we, we used we used Wheatley as exact same size school. They're buying more lunches than compared to Conway. And so um, they're in the black, we're in the red over here. And some of it has to do with some, you know, some small, some sub, um, some sub pay, longevity pay. Um, that that is part of that number there. But um, overall, there's the issue that the 
their numbers aren't rising. And so we kind of have to look into more as to, you know, is it a cultural thing in the sense of do more kids like to bring lunch at Conway? Um, you know, what are the, you know, what's being provided, that kind of thing. Um, so well, since Desi changed some lunch rules, it, it, it is there. It, it drops. There into. is, there is, and especially, and I think um, Conway had a different, um, you know, I think from what I hear, because right, I wasn't experiencing it, but it had a, just a different um, where they were, what they were serving for lunch, and the amount they were serving, and that kind of thing was more attractive before okay. Desi's involvement, um, and kind of bringing that culture back around and it's you know and it wasn't like it was gummy bears and ice cream yeah you know you know it wasn't yeah. awful uh, by my, any my means. Is, is that you know we when we decided to be part of the four school consortium mm -hmm. whatever we gave up um, the um, our own staff doing the, the own pre and, and we were famous throughout the district as having the best scratch cooking like mm -hmm. by far mm -hmm. and we've sort of given that up to an, some extent to be part of the program mm -hmm. and that, that that might be everybody else the program lifted up, us the program brought down. No, I actually and think it was Desi. I think no. But the, at the same time, I believe a lot of that scratch cooking was not following the Desi yeah. things and eventually um, kind of was going to get in trouble with that. And so, or was getting in trouble at the same time. I wasn't in charge at the time, but it, from my understanding it's that we had like one, there was a few years back, we had one inspection that had some whatever, but then they came back and gave us, the, and then the year after that was good. But, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think what the issues were. I don't know what they were. But. So, and I, you know, I, mean, I talked with Mary, who, uh, Mary Dulizzo, who's the, uh, um, who's running our... Less sugar. Less sugar, no salt. More vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. vegetables. No, all that stuff. Yeah. That, you know, um, none of us. And she's, you know, and she's, um, and, and she's working with um, Jeannie up here and um, trying to find out, just doing what they can within what their limitations are to improve it. Um, it is, it is awful tough in the smaller schools to um, keep it in the black. It's possible, but it's also. You know, the amount of adults buying lunch and those other things also offset some of the other schools where, you know, that may be happening more. Um, so, and it's not the adult's so job to offset the lunch. The, the other thing is that... As well, but those are just some of those additional. Those all add right. up to the so, other things. And, and the profit loss <clears throat> statement, again, does not include the cost of employee benefits in this schedule. Yeah. And if we were to add that, it would be further in the red. Right. But that would be an accurate reflection. But, I mean, I've been saying this for years, that the whole error in this approach <coughs> is the belief that this should be a cost neutral or a profit center. And that I, it should be a loss and that we should go in acknowledging that. And we used to just take it out of E&D at the end of the year um, uh, or some such thing, whatever. But I think that we should just be estimating our losses and putting that in the budget and, um, and that that's... You know, like, there, yeah, we, we've had over the years there, you know, like I'm, I'm pretty much philosophically opposed to suing a lot of parents unless it's like a fact pattern is like deserving of it. Mm -hmm. But there's been cases, too many cases where the parents that are barely, barely, barely not able to afford the free meals are the ones that are, yeah, the ones are, on the are, cusp. Are, 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 are the ones that can't pay, and those are the ones that I, I just re do not want to ha like have the town and the school suing those types, or even have their uh, names known. I have one right. question. We have uh, we recently implemented that you could pay online now. Yeah. Yep. There's a but the problem now is the problem is the complaints that I've heard is that there's a fee. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a dollar ninety five fee. Oh, there's a transaction fee. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they can still bring in their checks, and they can still right, do right, it the, right. old, the old way, but no, if those no, parents I, wanted to pay a convenience fee. Um, so I've heard both sides, though. So I've heard a lot of people say it's about time, and right. it's worth the fee, because they send you an email when you're running low, and it's one less thing you have to chase your kid running out the door with, because you've forgotten right. you know, 10 times. And um, you know, I have to say, my kids are in a different district. They have that. I pay the fee, because that's one less, you know. It is a convenience fee, but again, it's, <coughs> You know, we try to find it's convenient. <laughs> it's it is convenient, and you know. Um, but the other side of it is, I you know, and I also I also get it. It's 
it's a, you know, cut, as my wife says, it's um, death by paper cuts in the sense of mm -hmm. all the little fees that we pay in life. But oh, totally. um, we, there's no free system out there, and to do a system in-house, um, yeah. you also don't remember to do a system in-house with four different towns, with four different treasures, yeah. with four different, you know, it's just not, um, we didn't see a way to do it. So we thought it was better to get this yeah. system out there, at least it gets, um, one convenience out there, and if you know we can find something I think better, our taxes over. are only twenty-five cents, aren't they? <coughs> <coughs> the, 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 the excise tax like fee is twenty-five cents per transaction on the town website. Twenty-five cents. Couple well, the town, kind of the town should take a, a hint from the food. Okay. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> oh, and increase it? Yeah, yeah increase I think it. it's yeah, just the I think it's just the company that they're doing the transaction. Yeah. yeah. Is the cents. supplies part of the expenditures? Is that due for to water going up? Like you have to cook with? The water's not. I don't think it's the water's not. Right. The oh. water that the kids are getting because of the. No, no, oh, in the just kitchen. water in the kitchen being used for cooking. Are you? Well, we're no, no, that, that, yeah, they believe, boil. I don't believe that's connected. What we're noticing here yeah. is that the food cost from September. September was supplies. double November. November is like half. So you have you got to bring your front. you got to yeah. yeah you okay. got to bring your stocks up yeah so you're going to spend more on food and supplies and you're also going to spend more on um, uh, you can see the actually the supply line you're going to bump some months the salary is way up um, so the supplies went up but that food also costs has to do went with down the right that's because you can purchase some of your non perishable food in bulk. Um, Chair, we have, a, we have a question whether they can ask a question. Uh, does the profit and loss statement take into account the new food service director's salary? Yes. Okay. It gets divided among the towns. I assume it's in there, yes. But, I mean, October, September, losses of 87 and 240, you extrapolate that 10 months, that's two to 3,000, and that's what it always is. That's why I said we're right, yeah. we're right now uh, probably um, a couple hundred over where we were last year. I mean, I think Kristen's done a, you know, put a lot of effort into collecting money and tried to streamline things and whatever. And I think, I, I don't know how many years I've been in school committee, like coming on 12, like in different stints, but it's never been <laughs> a break even. No, hey. but well, I, and the time we spend on but it. But we we have we have I know by the time we spend on it, but we have to try, or else people are saying you can't do it. Yeah, no, there's no, no such thing as a free one. Mm -hmm. yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Uh, review of FY20 budget timeline. So it's part of your packet. Um, if I can get to it there, somewhere in my packets in your packet. Um, as you can kind of just. See ahead that, um, you know, please remember to look at your school committee schedules because now we're going to night meeting. Well, we're at night meetings, but the, the six o'clock start and you just have me, um, not me running in late from a second meeting. So yeah, I um, thought we were both here tonight. I thought Waitley was or somebody was ahead of us at six and that's why we were at seven. I didn't know you were running between meetings. I thought so you no, were Sunderland running. started at 530. Last oh. time you guys went at 530. And they went, so we swapped the two just for fairness. Oh, when we piloted that with Waitley, we were in the same building. I know. Oh, that's. That'll make your life easier, huh, Gears? So then, what? So I, then, I, I, I was looking they'd be at running over, right, right. and so that's why I came right. straggling in. I, but I followed the speed limit the whole way here. <laughs> Tuesday, the police are Tuesday out is. in Conway. So right. yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Follow the true. speed limit. Especially on, on Tuesday Friday. and Friday. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> um, so basically, um, right now, um, Kristen's um, preparing the budget um, for what her needs are. Um, right now, we don't even have a governor's budget, so it's very, it's basically, we're just looking at what, what the needs are, um, what are there going to be the changes we're looking at going into next year. Um, the, you know, the governor's budget doesn't come out till mid-January, mm -hmm. right? So we're not okay. going to have real numbers or predictions. I mean, we're hearing rumors, and we'll, we'll run off rumors. But, um, but as you know, just kind of reviewing the process, we'll get a budget together. Then we're going to see how the, um, you know, how the, the governor's one and uh, House two come out and 
House Two, right? Yes. House Two come out, and um, you know we'll, we'll manage it from there. But at least you'll have the idea of what we're looking for and where the things are going starting in January. Are we budgeting a business director or whatever the heck the title was? Or are we not? <coughs> so that decision. Very good question. So remember that we have um, in January. So right now, you know, I'll just go into part of this part of my report, but. Um, right now, I posted for the second half for um, a business service, and so okay. the bids are due on um, Friday by noon. So Friday at noon, I'll be opening the bids, and that is to take the current contract from the end of January through the end of July. If remember okay. that we said we were going to go a month longer, um, so that the transition, if there is a transition, um, that there's you know, more overlap because of um, like the TMS got you know, sacked trying to pick up in July, closing one books and opening another, which right. was, a, was a lot to ask. At the January 22nd meeting, the joint school committee is going to have to make a decision on where it wants to go with the business manager, mm -hmm. um, whether or not to open it back up to the what they call the traditional style of a business person, um, or go with the um, business um, um, model. Mm -hmm. So that that and obviously the other one is the, what you're going to do with the interim superintendent. Right. So, right now the chairs, so everybody else knows the chairs are talking, trying to get a date where they can get together to discuss what that agenda looks like and the approach on that agenda. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no real systems in place, that's what right. other models that other communities use is have the chairs come together, develop an agenda and a system within that of how they want to move forward on that. So, talk to your chair if you have thoughts, both. ideas, and there you go. <laughs> so, um, um, Consider a five-year contract. Who, who is? I assume the business manager was in charge of the people behind the scenes. You know, getting all the money out internally in the school. Like oversaw those people, right? People crunching numbers, not not the the well, group we have such? now. Yeah. <laughs> Did the business manager supervise them? The elves in the back room. Right. Technically, yes. Okay. Yes, not technically. So yes. now, who is doing that? Um, it's the, kind of the so service is not the service doing doesn't that. doesn't supervise, but works with. Mm -hmm. um, I am fortunate that we have a veteran staff. Yeah. And so, um, if we had rookies there, we would be in um, okay. in a different situation. Okay. Um, but they're very you know helpful and um, they know their jobs. They know their job and okay. um, it's not it's not seamless, yeah. but um, mm -hmm. because they're professionals would be yeah. the way to say it that mm -hmm. we're moving along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean the Yeah, they've been very helpful. I mean between the between the four and there's hundred years experience, you know what right. I mean? So it's just really yeah. um, And uh, do any of them do they get annual performance evals? That stuff? It's supposed to. Okay. So um, So I wondered if that then fell to you or that's would be the default right now because okay. there's no one else just them. thinking big picture about yep. all the duties of that job and whether they're getting done kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, um, it is something to discuss. And, it, and in, you know, the former business manager's case, she had picked up a lot of duties and, not duties, but a lot of tasks and um, things that, I'm not sure the, the average business manager would pick up, but right. things the superintendent asked her to do, or to, well, she had she negotiated did instead to be paid of as Marty left for to, HR. For HR, so she had negotiated a pretty decent raise yeah. to take on those responsibilities. Correct. I don't think they were necessarily going her way, but she wanted more money. A lot of it was, was, was a lot of it was brought to her. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, what kind of. A lot more scrambling right now to keep the services anywhere near where it was at. Yeah. So. Even the little stuff, the transportation coordinator, that she she was that as well. That was never she one was. of her favorite duties. but uh, mm. Dealing with the bus contract. Yeah, and when but now that's on somebody get... else's shoulders, too. Uh. Right. So I deal with the bigger ones, and I hand off the smaller ones to the secretary, who yeah. kind of just passes along. The information away, she passes along. Right. Away. Conflict in my Right. So. so it sounds like the, the business manager position does provide coverage for certain things that need to get done that they are could, important. They could be redistributed, though. Oh, they could be redistributed. Okay. I'm not sure it's worth it. Well, anyway, that's a bigger okay. talk. But. 
So, but that is the discussion. That's that That's should be on the agenda the 22nd. Yeah. For the chair. You guys are jointly. Yeah. Well, the chairs will figure out how the agenda will look, but that should be on the that's on the agenda for the yeah. 22nd to decide how they want to move forward. Okay. So, because <clears throat> we were kind of theoretically low ball for a business manager, theoretically. Up there, but. For what it's worth, I did speak with the state legislators three times in the past two days, and. Uh, they're, they're really big on the Chapter 70 foundational thing happening in January and with the governor's support and they're predicting to me um, substantial increases in school funding for the state and possible statutory 100% transportation funding and this and that. So, so we'll dream see. big with your budget. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Dream big. I Don't penny this. pinch. So all those things I drew a line through? <laughs> right. Bring them on. Bring them on. <laughs> As we right. always say, where are they going to get the revenue pitch. from? It's, what the it's, kids a, it's the stuff they tell you in private, though, and then they get up in front of a microphone and camera, and it's uh, mm -hmm, mom's the word. So there is a lot of different movement from different groups from the rural schools, and now they're talking about um, you know other looking at other formulas from the, from the chapter 70 and, um, and just looking at the cost of what a, a small school, rural school, how much more it costs versus in. And having to match the state, the deficit that, between the state, what the state is funding and such. And so, um, I mean, it, you, when you look at our community, the difference has been made up by the towns in all four right. towns. Right. And um, we've been, you know, children of our community have been fortunate the towns the community has picked up. Absolutely. That is not happening outside of where, Absolutely. you know, some towns are struggling more. They can't pick up the difference. And so you're seeing large classroom sizes, you're seeing, um, right. you know, yeah. Right, and then people yeah. flee your district. Yeah. So it then, starts a whole nother thing. Then that's why, and that's right. why we do all the school choice. And so right. then it's kind of, right. yeah, an ugly cycle that we get into. Yeah. <clears throat> all righty, so we had one more financial thing. Oh, no, we didn't. All right, on um, to reports. Well, real quick, um, we have eight warrants for 62000 Oh. Oh, you've added oh, them up. You did the math. Great. Awesome. We got the same amount. So <laughs> awesome. Good. That's great. So 62,264 62, oh, oh, and 76 sorry. cents. Sorry. Can you give me that again? My phone's going. 62,264 and 76 cents. 76? Yep. Eight warrants. 6226476. 6226476. Two, six, two, two, six, six. And eight warrants. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. School committee members I can add. Amazing. I totally mm -hmm. Under pressure. <laughs> Under pressure. You totally didn't use our calculator. <laughs> you are so ready for that, Long hand that second grade even. math with your son. Wow. I don't know. All right. Next item on the agenda. Yep. Reports. Capital budgets. Mm -hmm. Is there anything on? I think capital projects are already the... The well. The well. I mean, um, Chris and I do have to talk about if there's any capital improvements we need for this building that we need to go to the town for. Um, for the so next budget year. We do have, um, I'll sit down with Jerry from Bob and Junior, but we do have a list of things that weren't completed yet. On the, um, on remember the when we asked for the security system? and the, So I'll. I'll Set up a meeting with you and Bob yep. to go over those. Yep. And but that, that is coming, so at the next meeting we will have what we hope to. Yep. If there's any additional things outside the budget that we want to go for so, on a warrant. Um, so I, I do know that, because um, I did check last week, that the, our, the grammar school capital stabilization fund is at 269, 268, something like that. And our original goal when we set that up seven years ago, something like that. It was 200, wasn't it? Um, it was like 250. Okay. Um, because we, what we wanted to do was worst case scenario, all major systems blow up at once. Well, we're expecting the furnace at some point is gonna. But, right, but that. Sorry, could, I know wood. <laughs> you did, but, but that's real wood. And then that could be anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000. It's like a whole right. range of stuff that could happen with that. But um, so. So you're saying less probably from it. You're saying that because we have the account that we may want to consider using some of that money? That is what, yeah. Right. And you still have to go to town meeting and ask for the re it be released. But right. since you get to say this doesn't affect your assessments whatsoever, usually right. that, that, goes, that goes well. And um, this would be then the first year in 
a number of years that we'll, we will not be making a request for additional funds towards the capital stabilization, the grammar school capital stabilization. Um, and part of that was that so that we would have the funding then to direct to the frontier uh, capital right. uh, improvement project because the, this year coming up is the big year for that. Right. Um, and then we'll see. Now, is that money invested in gaining interest somewhere? Or is it sitting in an idle gain, account? I believe it's collecting? gaining interest, but um, don't quote me on that. But I think that that's the law that all those things have to be in interest bearing accounts, but I'm not I quite so. sure. $250,000 could be gaining some decent interest, right? Mm. Yeah. Not that I'm a yeah. financial advisor. 1%. One percent times two. Yeah, it's a couple of shekels. <coughs> All right. did, that, did the basketball hoops get fixed that were broken out here on the? No, program? that's my actually that's my fault. So um, I do have a lead on you know I, where to get them and everything. I, I don't know. I, I got to talk to you. Phil. I don't know who to get to put those up. How important? Will they do that? Yes. They will. Okay. Yes. Yes, Tom. They have all yes. the equipment. Outside basketball hoops? Yeah. yeah. They're broken. Darius actually gave me a link to some good hoops. Yeah. Um, that and we've don't gotten some nice donations, like from the basketball league, and, and we have so we have the money for that. I just didn't know who the. Yeah, so. the town will do that. Hmm. Ask there, and then put in your newsletter to parents if anybody wants to. Right. Our Boydens will come over with their tractor. They're also basketball people. So. I don't know if they need to get set in concrete or if they just That's need the, sure. the top, the rim needs to be replaced. Well, the town paid, what, a million dollars to get for the outdoor basketball hoops in town, behind town hall, and those things, every time you, they're in, they're in asphalt, but they, every time uh, you, doing. And, and it, you can't, it, Alrighty. Yeah, that didn't go well. Uh, I have no report. Uh, Kristen, Darius, you want to do your reports? Sure. Hey, what's going on? I just added something and it went away. Okay, I'm good. You know sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so oh, okay, so we're going to this. The fifth grade carpet is being removed in December, and they're gonna, we're going to put down tile. Um, there was a lot of mildew this summer in the fifth grade, so that's happening. Commercial tile, I assume? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I might have mentioned, or maybe I didn't, but our sixth graders... Um, participated in so Yankee Candle wanted to do a promotional fundraising video so when someone contacts them to do a fundraiser they have a DVD that they send to people or a link and it hasn't been redone in quite a while and one day I had this really nice gentleman set up a meeting with me and come and he was one of the executives from Yankee Candle and he heard about our school and um, he, they were looking for kids like live performances from kids and Several people he knew said, you have to go to Conway Grammar School. You have to go to Conway Grammar School. So I said, "You didn't you come to the right school? We have the most sparkly students around. So our sixth grade, um, they came and they set up like it was like a movie set. You know, they had the lights, camera, action, and the kids um, were part of the video. Well, it's done, and they're really excited about it tomorrow. They said they, they're really excited about it up here. They said it came out. Phenomenal. So tomorrow, some of the executives from Yankee Candle and, and Darius, and we're going to do a showing of the video that's going to be sent all over the country nice. with our cool. sixth graders starring in it. At the end, it has a picture of Conway Grammar School and our address, and so we're going to be sort of all over. So we're really cool. excited about that. That was that's a great offer. Do you need someone to uh, ask them to donate to the scholarship fund? Mm. Yeah. That'd be a good time to ask them to donate to the Conway Grammar School Scholarship, scholarship Fund. Fund. Yeah. <laughs> good, go. good idea. But I do have to say, I was at Yankee Candle yesterday, and they gave twenty thousand dollars to our seniors. The annual yearly. That's, That's pretty good. Twenty thousand. They've been doing that for years. It's fabulous. Wow. Nice. Yep. They're great. But our winter concert is Friday at ten o'clock. Um, our December professional development has focused on technology. Um, our teacher and instructional assistant observations have been completed in goal setting. We'll do another round in January. Um, and then we're going to be doing another round of the NIWA testing in January in math and reading. So I'll come to you with a um, 
presentation of how those results are. We're moving along really well here at Conway Grammar School. Awesome. It's a short month, so. Yeah. Um, is the fifth grade classroom, do we think it's just the carpet? Is there chances it's other issues, or we're just starting with the carpet, or? <coughs> so this summer we did find quite a bit of mildew, and we went in. Everywhere and, had mildew. So. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right, yeah. And we went in and cleaned desks and chairs and everything. But there's still been a hint of a smell yeah. in the carpet, so we yeah. do think it's just the carpet. Okay. We're Not in walls or? No, it okay. doesn't appear okay. to be. So that's good. Okay. So Sunderland had some same kind of issue. Um, we brought out a uh, specialist from the state who said that this summer, the uh, he said the impact was the, it was, a, was the same as like saying you have a Category 5 storm or something. Mm -hmm. you, it was the perfect scenario where you had multiple days of heat it was not escaping buildings and just kind of across the state, just no just kind of, you know, just hit, hit, hit buildings like they'd never been hit before yeah. um, because it was not, you didn't get the cooling down at night, the, the moisture was staying in the buildings and that kind of stuff. So it is kind of this widespread thing. Um, and so I'm just saying in a sense, you know, yeah. again, um, when, when he went through looking for, he goes, nothing you can do, there's not a whole lot you can do about the result of that action, he's looking for ongoing water source that creates mold and stays versus mildew and other kind of thing. So yeah. um, he said, but yeah. it was it was a it was a terrible you know once in twenty years or you know yeah. he kind of explained that this is not I, it was it was higher than usual. So I'm just taking that fact and you know Conway was. Yep. It's likely though because <clears throat> the, the school's built on shelf. Yeah. It's, just, it's out of the roof. The roof is the. Source yeah. of most, many of our problems, whatever. But hopefully not anymore. anymore I've replaced right? it twice in my lifetime. So. Fourth, we're in the fourth roof. Right. Twice in my 20 years in town. 20 something. 25. I don't know. Whatever it is. Still not a local. Net Darius, do you have a report? Right, so, yep. That was sent out to you all. Yep. Um, and just to kind of run through it, the um, the files from Christian Lane are being moved out tomorrow. And Town of Conway thanks you for thanks the school district for five filing cabinets. Yeah. Yes. We yeah, we have this excess of filing cabinets, which I first um, asked the town administrators to come get some and they many of them have. Um, and so we'll see what we'll do with the rest of them after that. So um, I know a metal guy. All right. Let me know. <laughs> some of them are metal thing, but others still some are still in good operational condition. So mm -hmm. um, and uh, where are we going from there? Um, and so, you know, the sale of Christian Lane is moving forward now. Um, the collective bargaining is underway. You'll see that on your agenda moving forward, there'll be um, executive session. And that's if you ever want to go to executive session to get updates on um, negotiations, we can do that. Um, so moving forward. So when you see that um, in the next couple months as we go through this, that is your um, certainly can go there. Right now, there's nothing really to report because we've only did introductions. Mm -hmm. um, and the next meeting is um, not until January, and we do have a strategy meeting prior to that meeting with the subcommittee. So um, that's what there's there's for. The um, but if you wanted to chip in, and if you thought there's there'd be specific strategies that you'd like to say, you, we should have a meeting today since it's on the agenda. Yeah, if you want to add anything, we, we can yes. certainly go into that and do that too. Um, the business management um, service has been posted. I think I said that earlier, and things are pretty this Friday. Um, I gave out the Superintendent's Excellence, Academic Excellence Award to Miss Emily Laws, who is just a phenomenal student um, and all around um, involved person in the community. So I'll be presenting that at the Frontier School Committee next month. She's a student? Student, a yeah, senior. senior. Yep. Where's she going to school? She's waiting on acceptance letters, and um, it's an impressive list of schools from Ivy, you know, all the way to staying local, um, Mount Holyoke, and um, even UMass Amherst. So, you know, so the whole, kind of the whole, the whole range there. Um, she wants to study physics, and you know, she's just one of those people who does everything. is involved yeah. in everything. Is that, is that award still only 100 bucks? Or is, that? is that award still just a hundred bucks, or have we bumped it up in over time at all? There's no money at all. I know. I said There's you are really? just. I said it's the be, it's the most prestigious award with no money. Um, but you know, <laughs> she got a free dinner out of it. We had dinner at the tech oh. school, and she got recognized, and I wow, a nice glowing speech there. about her. 
<laughs> a compliment is worth more than money. Yeah, yeah, That's course. what I gave her. There's yeah. at least um, thirty bucks in the in the fountain in front of Jerry's place. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Scrape it out. <laughs> hey, and the last thing on my um, my list is the. Um, I hope you've all saw the letter that your your select board put out there to Jeff Riley regarding the, the expansion of the Chinese Immersion School. Yes. Um, I also included one sent out by the collaborative. Um, and the collaborative one, I think, has a lot of um, a lot more facts regarding the, the whole the general um, Western Mass, and I thought it was informative, so I kind of included that in the packet too. So, um, again, and you know, putting it out there, it's not against the the, the idea of the charter school, but the, the system has it set pitting schools against schools for money, and an um, expansion of that school was, would hurt the communities financially um, with kids leaving. Do all the school, all the charters get that much money per kid? Or yes, does it depending, vary per it depends on, school? yeah, it depends on the school that's coming from, but yes. So, um, it's it's around, you know, eighteen to $20,000 in our district. And what does it cost us to educate a kid internally? That is a loaded question. So that's when people talk about choice and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, you can take your average cost of, um, and I could, I could throw it over to you, Judy, if I, if I get too far off. But um, you can have your average cost of kid, and people yeah. say that you know your chart, you know, you know, choice is costing us money because it costs us this much to educate. Right, a kid. you only get like five grand. Right, you only get choice. five. You get five grand per student that hasn't changed since school choice started. And that's right. another kind Isn't of movement where why aren't they changing that? The politics on that is that only Western Mass and the Cape are the two biggest. Um, Choice areas in the state. Yeah. Eastern Mass, there's not a whole lot of choice going on. Yeah. They haven't, you know, they just there's not that kind of. Surprised they haven't already done away with it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and there's, so there's also like a, f a far left argument that the one that pays that that choice fee is the sending town. And so that money, if if it were if it were the state that reimbursed us for that, I think everybody would be increase it, but. It's Greenfield and Gill right. that's paying us that, and Montague, whatever. And, and us. Right, right, but, but basically it's the communities in our area that are least able to afford a, an increase would be the ones that would be asked to pay it. So, uh, right. like. And so the question you asked is about what does it cost, and then you can get into when you have 13 students in the class and you add three choice students, right. how much did that cost the school? Right. You know, paper. Right. You know, some, no, some supplies, no. that kind of stuff. It's not that much more, but um, but the way the budgets are running, um, the right. idea that choice being a few extra dollars is now in some of our, and right. we're fortunate within some of our schools, it's a significant amount of money, right. and we've started to offset that difference between the state funding and the town funding. You know, we've been offsetting the you know that with choice, right. and it gets into a very, and once you're in the choice game, it's hard to leave because. You got to pay for the kids going out by taking right. kids in, um, and then with the charter, you got you're hoping to make up some of that charter loss as well for, with kids coming in. So it's right. a, it's a, yeah. So that's where that is. So that's yeah. why it's a complicated yeah question. Okay. All right. Any you collaborative? Plan? You don't have time for that these days. No, right? I don't. Okay. I, I, if if anybody else wants to <laughs> do that part, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, we should ask Ira next time because he's in Northampton, and it is kind of interesting. But it's super interesting. Yeah. They always give good presentations. Yeah. It's just yeah. they feed you. They do it's feed every you every other month. They feed us. Yep. <laughs> and there's Dessert, like coffee. sixty something towns. Yeah. I mean, it's a big. You know, it's interesting. I learned a lot going to it. But. All right, are we going into executive session? We are. Okay. So. Um, so at this point, anybody not part of us can be excused. That's you get to go home. You get to go home. Thank you for coming. All right. Happy holidays. Okay. So we have to do oh. roll call after everybody's. Yeah. And are you going back in? We well, can roll call in the camera, okay. you know, oh, okay. just for the record. So okay. You did it properly, so you probably should read. We're going in. We're going in for both reasons. Okay. Executive session to enter to, into executive session pursuant MGL Chapter 30A Section 212 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or.
contract negotiations with non-union personnel. I don't think you have to do both of them. I think okay. the second one gets covered by that. So roll call to yes. vote That's yes right. to go well, into executive one. session. Right. Phil? Yes. That's yes. what you gave me that rear before. Me? Yes. 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 Okay. I'll take Michael? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Yeah.